I would like to ask now Bob Jovan. It has been shown very clearly that if you want to hit the most aggressive spot of the tumor, and that's what you want, I think, the most aggressive part, the most rotten part in the apple, the inaccuracy should not exceed of any technique of more than 1.9 millimeters. Publication shown by Wendy van der Ven, as shown by the presentation of Bernd Ham. So now, Bob, you have your MR transfusion, the best system you want. And you as a urologist, together with your radiologist, are doing that MR transfusion biopsy. My first question is, what areas would you biopsy? Only the ones visible with MRI, or just to be certain you have a negative predictive value which is not quite sure, would you also do additional not MR targeted biopsies? So that's a challenge. You have your needle in the patient. So why don't you take eight or, or ten more needles? So that's my first question. The second question is, now you don't have a radiologist beside you. You're in a private practice. You have your technique. N the biopsy comes back negative on a pilot four and five lesion. What would you do? So first question, would you do additional target biopsies? Uh, Non-targeted biopsies? Bob? Okay. Okay, yeah, look, thank you very much for your, um, for your very accurate questions. I, the, the answers are actually quite simple. Uh, this is not breast cancer. Prostate cancer is a totally different disease. Prostate cancer doesn't kill you. Um, in very small numbers, the cancer will eventually uh, lead to death, and therefore our challenge is a totally different one. Remember, you're talking about biopsying here. We're talking about thousands of patients who are coming in and screening and early detection protocols sitting in your office. If these procedures are complicated, expensive, time-consuming, we can talk about it at the ECR or at the EAU, but it will not leave the room because it's not practicable in a, in, a, in a realistic way. So your first question was about doing more targets. I think this is an academic question, and it'd be answered by statistics. If the positive predictive value exceeds 70 percent, this is roughly what we agree on in urology, and a negative predictive value is also above 60 percent, then I have a fairly accurate identification of a significant cancer that is defined by pathology, which is Gleason score more than seven, seven included, four plus three or three plus four. This is a cancer core that is roughly more than 0.5. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking today's of 0.2s as well, and less than 10% cancer core involved. If we can predict that with our MRI, and that's my question back to you, then I don't need additional cores, because even okay. if I miss cancer, that cancer is not going to kill my patient. Okay. Now, I give you the data. The data are there on literature. Negative predictive value in between 92 and 97 percent. Various authors. Second, positive predictive value as presented by Francois with his trust fusion technique and multiparametric MRI direct in bore biopsy technique is above 80 to 85 percent. What would you do as a urologist and what would your colleague do who is not at this presentation? Would he still do extra biopsies and with that increasing the risk of detecting insignificant cancer because that's one of the major limitations for trust biopsy at this moment. Professor Schroeder very clearly pointed it out yesterday. So my question is, would your colleague refrain from doing additional biopsies, which doesn't bring anything to the patient from my point of view, given the high negative and positive predictive value? That's, that's a little bit my fear, that if, if you are using the technique, you'll do it right, but your colleague... Yeah, like you're too fast. You even didn't let me answer your second question from the first part of your uh, question. The second question but still has I'm, to I'm come. I'm a simple urologist. I, I need time to think. <laughs> you know, you're way too fast for us. You know, Remember that urologists are simple-minded. This being said, what you're saying with the PPVs of 90 and NPVs of over 80, these are beautiful numbers. It sounds a little bit like election results in banana republics. Uh, I, I personally think these are great numbers. The problem is with that, and I believe those numbers. I want to state here very clearly, I clearly believe your numbers and I always loved your work. The problem is this is not based on the early detection patient population. You have a selected group of patients that undergo radical prostatectomy in which you do your MRI before and then correlate your MRI with that. Nobody has ever done a screening population in which MRI was based on a screening influx population, at least my modest information, I'm not aware of that. 
Fritz Schröder, I communicate quite a lot with him. And when Fritz was active, actually, we were the part of the work that you did was to identify the best tools. But now we have to transport that to an early detection population. And then I suspect that the NPV and the PPV will be much lower. And I think the best we can hit today probably is going to be 60%, maybe 70%. Okay. But 90% NPV, PPV means I'm going to quit being a urologist and become a radiologist. Well, that's a good idea. Um, first of all, let me make some rebuttal. I'm coming from the Banana Republic, which is a democratic, <laughs> re not a republic, but a monastery is called the Netherlands. And, and we don't deal with bananas. We deal with facts. We deal with scientific data. We are Europe. We are not a banana republic. And please have a, have a close... I didn't mean that, Yellow. You know that. No, I know. I didn't mean it either. So... Please have a look, have a good look at the data which are there on a patient with a biopsy knife naive population, a raised PSA, and the data are there. But the fact that I have some problems in convincing you means that we have, as radiologists, problems in convincing the urological community. So my fear is that you do a targeted biopsy. You will be better, but still you will not refrain from doing additional cause, which, in my point of view, will harm the patient. Okay, the future has to learn who is right, and I think the truth will be in the middle. My second question. If you have a negative MR trust biopsy patient, and that is perhaps also a question to François Cornu, if you have a negative MR trust biopsy patient in a pilot 4 to 5 lesion, what would you do? Would you say, well, it's, it's not good, the pilot's classification, patient has to come back, or in that case, would you refer the patient to yeah. a site which is doing direct in-bore biopsy? As a radiologist, but also the question: What would you do as a as an as a urologist? No, no, that's exactly. This is this is this is what uh, a kind of answer in the in the in the talk by Byrne. A selected patients for me are these pa these patients. Any kind of I think I think the future is going to begin start with the uh, image fusion, and uh, would would uh, suspicion of, of failure of, of a trust MR fusion guided biopsy be uh, admitted by by, by 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 the group? I think that the patient would will be sent to a MR guided uh, okay. uh, in bore uh, biopsy. That 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 that's okay. Just to answer between your figures, between the figures of the Banana Republic and the reality, we have some figures of the negative predictive values, but not with radical predictive specimen. The only figures we have is to compare the negative predictive value of MR with the negative predictive value of template biopsy. So if you admit uh, if you admit the, the, the negative paritic value, uh, would you admit the fact that 90% is uh, acceptable if you believe in the fact that 90% is the negative predictive value of template biopsy, Bob? Absolutely, Francois. I, I totally agree with you. And, and, and if 90% was achievable, we would be extremely happy. Okay. That's fair enough. That's why for the moment we still do additional target biops, uh, systematic biopsies at the request of the rheologists. We are very tempted not to do them. And sometimes in a repeat session of, of biopsies, uh, after a first negative set of sexton biopsies, we don't do, we don't repeat the, the sexton biopsies. And, uh, well, sometimes we, 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 we treat a little bit, we do only six instead, instead of 12, you know, one per sextant, just to be uh, pleasant with the colleague you, you, urologist. One, one final question, Francois. Now you have. Excuse you, me. You, no, you, we have to close because we are over time. So it's a, it's a pity because the discussion is excellent, but uh, just we have to close because uh, it's we, we have passed the time. I will. I would like to thank. And what is clear is the a new paradigm of prostate biopsy is here. The problem and the challenge is how we are going to perform this prostate biopsy. And thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you.